what, what grade is this small community? Um, you know, I think we have about 10,000 people. Um, it's a farming community. It's a tight neck community. Uh, the, the community is, it's a great community. I actually had a, a young lady say, well, I want to move in your community, but I heard you guys have a gang and a drug problem. And I don't know if I want to live in a place that has a gang and a drug problem. And I told her, if you can find me a place in California that has, does not have a gang and a drug problem, I'll move there too. <laughs> it, 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 it's everywhere. 2012, we unfortunately lost a, a young man to a drive-by shooting. He was a Norteño gang member. He was only 18 years old. And he was killed by three other young men who were only between the ages of 16 and 18 years old. Um, who were Sereno gang members. At the ages of seven, eight years old, all of those kids went to school together, played together, they were friends. The young man that lost his life that was an Orteño actually started out gonna be a Sereno and chose to go to be an Orteño. Recently, I got arrested for, you know, seeing them uh, allegedly killing Bobbles. What do you, you call him, Roby? Uh, Bobbles. Bobbles, yeah. Were your friends at one point? Yeah, we were all friends. We were all some, where we are little groups of where you would call little southerners. You know, we used to all hang out. Him, some other dude. I think it was quite a few of us. Only three of them became northerners, and the rest of us, you know, became southerners. There's a, a, a bunch of different reasons for uh, kids joining gangs, and it could go anywhere from a need for protection to um, the romanticizing um, by both our media and just um, society in general, romanticizing of the gang uh, lifestyle, the gang subculture. They listen to it through their music, through TV shows, through movies, and all that stuff. So they have, they first and foremost, they start out with the, with the, uh, just an extremely wrong um, perception of what the gang lifestyle, what that lifestyle is, or what the gang subculture is all about. It all started really about like around like the fourth or fifth grade when I first moved over here, right? Uh, well, we came to, we came over here for like a visit to visit my aunt, and me and my brother ended up liking it a lot, so we were trying to tell our parents to move over here, and then. They thought it was a good idea too, so. And there was more job opportunities over here for them, you know? All the other kids a grade or two older than I am would uh, jump us just because we were from LA. So when I started going to middle school, I started seeing all these gang members just, you know? And that's what got me started into uh, hanging out with them so I can get protected with them from the other guys from the other gang. I first started hanging out with people, the, the guys of my age, right? But then soon after I started getting up, uh, after I got jumped in or whatever around middle school, at first it was just what I needed, the protection. But then after that, they wanted more. You're giving up pretty much your freedom to get be protected. Another big reason is, is the search for family. When you get that, then you kind of, you know, detour towards what's going to accept you as a family and gangs will present that to youth as they're their family. I got started with the gang when I was in a, at Chico Junior. I just started hanging out with the homies because you know I didn't really have like a strong sense of like who I was. I have a strong identity. I just grew up with my mom. My dad wasn't around. I didn't have any brothers or sisters and so it was kind of rough for me. So when I started hanging out with the homies it gave me like a, a sense of belonging. Like I felt like I was a part of something. I think my friend was called Diego. I can't remember his last name. The other guy named Frankie. That was the only two friends I had. And then from then, I remember we had a little fight with some other Mexican kids. And that's when I figured out which Norte and Sureños were. I kept on getting beat up by them because I wear LA stuff. Every time I got a, I went to the streets and I had a, either Lakers jersey or a Raiders jersey, they would, they would hit me up the same way the Blacks would in Los Angeles. And I was got amazed. I went from being to Los Angeles where the, the Black was supposed to be the enemy to where my own race now was my enemy. When I moved to Chico at 12, 13 years old, I wasn't surrounded by it as much, but 
as I was growing up, I got more discriminated against because where I was from, who I, who I was related to, who I was, they knew my name because of my family members. So it was practically forced upon me. I was 12 years old also when I got involved in the gang. I liked it because the power, the pride, the money, the drugs, everything that a person could possibly want. On October 1st, 2012, Serrano gang members, 16-year-old Ricky Cadillo, his older brother, 18-year-old Freddy Cadillo, and 19-year-old Alejandro Gonzalez committed a drive-by shooting on the streets of Gid Gridley, killing 18-year-old Norteño gang member Alonzo Robles Morales with a gunshot wound to the head. Que lo toman como juego, pero acaban con sus vidas. Destruyen a los padres. Todos perdemos. And most kids, when they want to be a part of something, they, they want to lift up their hand, raise their hand and say, what can I do to help you? By proving yourself is how you get into gangs nowadays. Just by showing that you're down. The word that these you're down and you're willing to do whatever you want. That's how you get involved. They say, this guy's down, this guy's got heart. And then they just use you. All they want is they just want a whole bunch of numbers. They want a whole bunch of people to be with them. You know, they want to look tough. They want to look like they, you know, they got a whole bunch of dudes and, um, they just want a whole bunch of soldiers, pretty much. They want you to do things for them. They want you to, um, they want you, they're not going to really ask you, but it, you're going to want to prove yourself. So they're going to want you to shoot at people. You know, you're going to, they're going to want you to stab people. They're going to want you to beat people up with no hesitation. They tell you like, don't even think about it. Just right when you see them, you just run up on them, you start punching. Don't even think about it at all. Really, there's always a war. It's just at what point or at what, like, stage the war is on, you know? Like, for pretty much the whole time, the whole last three months we were out there, like, my, I was getting shot at like every other week or something like that, you know? If a kid with various different uh, at-risk factors, and the at-risk factors are, are oftentimes not the parents' fault, they're just not. The at-risk factor could be um, where you live. The at-risk factor could be where you go to public school. The day I got out after doing that six those six months, my mom told me, um, you gotta go live with your grandma up in Gridley. I didn't even know where Gridley was, I never even heard of it. My mom told me that I was gonna come here and get out of trouble, but she moved me right into the middle of a, of a neighborhood that's just infested with gangbangers. And uh, the first day I moved out here, there was already some gangbangers right there in front of my house, um, just waiting for me to come, because they knew that I was coming. What, what gang were they in? The Norteños. Once I moved to Chico, it got real bad. The Southsiders over here would always jump me and stuff because they knew my past, they knew where I was from. So I really got sucked into it. It's not like it was, it's not always a choice. You know, the I mean? turf, the territory, you know what I mean? That's the bad part about it is that's where most of it comes in is disrespecting someone or disrespecting your territory. You know, me and all the homies, we used to stand right here at the corner, right here where this California street is, this California street sign. And then it would just be like shit, like 10 of us. You know, six of us at a time, every day, smoking weed right here. We would have guns tucked in the bushes and stuff. We would, we were, we were just looking for trouble on a daily basis. Did Freddie get you involved in the gang? <laughs> no. no. It what was, happened? It was, it was the opposite. He was uh, the good kid when we came over here, and um, he was, he was doing very good. And um, it was me getting mixed up, always getting in fights, and um. Wearing colors because the dudes are telling me you can't wear blue. You know it's Northern California. You know I'm kind of don't like don't I don't like to listen. And I would wear blue, hang out with Southerners, and and fight these people. I helped jump in a couple of uh, other kids right before I got locked up. Actually, my little brother included. So I'm not very proud of that one. Yeah, I started getting in trouble uh, probably like a year later after I. Got blessed in. I ended up getting into a fight uh, one night late when I was drinking with some of the homies. Ended up uh, stabbing a guy. In our county, more than 1,000 young men under the age of 23, and many as young as 16, have been sentenced to long prison terms, including life. In California, 6,500 men are serving life terms for a crime they committed before the age of 18, and almost always due to gang association. Each year in Butte County, there are more than 50 incidents 
involving shootings at an inhabited dwelling, shooting at an occupied car, stabbings, assaults with a deadly weapon, and other serious acts of gang violence. The damage is twofold. The victim, often a gang member himself, is injured, sometimes permanently. The gang member who commits the crime and goes to prison loses the chance to be the person he wants to be. He is cut off from family, friends, and most of the activities that give joy to a person. Everybody loses. This is a small community. When something like that happens, you go into bigger, larger LA, New York, and and you talk about one shooting, they, they think it's, uh, that's, that's not a big deal. But for a city like this, one shooting is huge. And now you have a lot of fear. You know, you have people scared to go out. Not realizing that, you know, as a police department, we're going to be active and do our, everything we can to make sure we're safe. Um, but it, it, it does put a lot of fear in communities. Now you have three young men who will be spending the majority of their life in prison. Um, you have three young men in the other car who are traumatized. One of them continued that life and he will not be spending a lot of his time in prison. The other one, I've talked to him and he's still scared. And it's been three years almost. So there's a lot of traumatic. Now you have their families. You have a, a mother who doesn't, she's not a part of a gang. She, she just knows she has her son who she does not have her son now. And you think as a parent, that's, that's tough. How you get out of the gang, if you're, if you're a hardcore gang member, um, it's called dropping out of the gang. Um, and if you uh, drop out of the gang, you just quit associate, uh, associating with them. If you're a gang member on the streets, you just quit associating with them and you say, I'm not going to participate. I'm not going to, I'm not going to participate in a criminal activity with you. I'm not going to be part of a, uh, uh, of this subculture anymore, they call that dropping out. Once you drop, if you're a, a gang member on the streets and you drop out, you are based, you are marked for additional uh, um, uh, violence. They want to kill you. Yeah, well, there's been incidents where they've tried to attack me. And, um, you know, uh, there's been times where I would have to, you know, fight or I just, I just don't, I don't want to back down to them because that's when they know that they've won. What happened yesterday was, was a hit out on me. They want, they want me dead. They, uh, you know, they don't want me to live in Gridley. They don't want me to be around. They don't want to see me in town, and uh, they just don't want me alive. Okay, so there, uh, there was another um, shooting uh, around my house after my house had gotten shot. Up. Uh, the Northerners and the, it was between the Northerners and the Southerners. Um, and from what I know, the, it was the Northerners that did it. The, um, you know, the Northerners were driving by the Southerners' house or uh, whatever, and they, uh, I guess they, they drove by and they just shot up the house, you know, for, for what happened to Alonzo. So they're not gonna stop until, you know, someone's dead, until they get one of them, for sure. Because so far they haven't. They only, par they paralyzed, the Northerners caught uh, Southside right here at Fast Strip, and they shot him and they paralyzed him. He's paralyzed right now. But, Wait, um, when did that happen? That happened right after Alonzo got killed. Yeah. And it was a Southsider from Compton that was out here. And uh, I guess there was a confrontation right here between some of the Northerners and some Southsiders. And uh, one of the Northerners ran to his car and got out the got out a pistol and uh, the, the Southsider took off running. Um, I don't know what direction it happened, but I know it was right here. And um, I guess he got hit a couple times in his spine or whatever and got paralyzed. So he's in a wheelchair now. And see, right now, see, I gotta watch. I gotta watch the people that are walking by because a lot of people that are walking by, they're actually family members of Northerners or Southsiders, so they can call people and say, "Hey, Gino's out here filming something right now." It's not worth it. I mean, it might seem cool, you know, and everything, but all the glamour, whatever you want to call it, that it has, you know, it's not worth it because at the end, it's like choosing your friends, your so-called friends who give you bad stuff like drugs, knives, guns, and all this other stuff over your family, you know? Who's always going to be there for you. Por favor, quiero pedirle a todas las personas que puedan ver ese video 
que digan no a las gangas. Yo les hablo con el corazón porque ha pasado tiempo de la pérdida de mi hijo y creo que jamás voy a recuperar a mi hijo. Su ausencia es terrible porque mi hijo era un hijo bueno para mí, ah, juguetón, mi sueño, con ganas de vivir, con mucha vida por delante. Solo tenía 18 años. Se destruyó mi hogar, se destruyó mi familia. ¿Qué les puedo decir? Mi hijo era a una persona, un joven, con ganas de vivir pero con sus propios pensamientos ideales. Gangs is not something you want to be in. It's most of the time it's a survival tactic. Most of the time it's just all you know, but you can get out of it. There is a way. You just need to stop, live your life and do not persecute anybody else for their different way of life because they're wearing a different color because they're from a certain place. That's not their fault. Just like you're in a situation that you are, it's not their fault they're in that situation. So just need to stop the hate. You need to stop fighting each other for no reason, for a color, you know what I mean? It's, there's nothing in the end. There's never anything in the end. It's just a constant fight. And it's always just darkness. You're always in the darkness. You're always fighting to get the, to get the next step up on somebody, but you'll never get that next step up. There's always somebody at the top. There's always something else you're gonna want. But if you turn your life around and actually want to get into sports or pursue a career, fight for it there's really nothing to fight for in that life it's it's fun it's flashy at the time but it's just it's not nothing you want to be involved in it's turmoil it's just all bad and they need to hear it from someone like me because if they're hearing it from a 30 year old man they're not really going to relate but me i'm younger and i could like you know what i'm saying tell them you know I, I i still know what's up i still know what's up in the streets you know i wouldn't want to see another kid another, another young soul Ending up the way I am, just cause some some dude thinks that's all about old culture. Oh, that's in the past. You can leave that in the past. It's not fair when you go walk in society and people point fingers and say, you know, that's the bad guy. He he's no good. Look what he does. It makes you feel awful when people look at you and they don't want to talk to you because of your sentence, of what you've done, or what they hear you've done. It's not fair to other people that or in your family that you see, or to other people that say your kid's a bad kid, when you know that your parents or my parents, they, they did a good job in raising us. But we're just too stubborn to understand. Todos esos jóvenes tienen mucho futuro por delante. Yo como madre perdí a mi hijo, babos. Los contrarios de los sureños perdieron su libertad. Sus padres quizás sientan un vacío un poco como yo, porque no tienen a sus hijos en hogar. Es terrible. Nadie ganó. Quizá perdí más yo por perder a mi hijo, Babo. Pero al final, nadie ganó. Todos perdimos. Fue inútil. Por favor, digan no a las gangas. No es bueno. Solo se destruyen ustedes mismos y destruyen las familias. I've hurt people. I've hurt people's kids. I've hurt, you know what I mean? I've done a lot of bad things in my life and I just, I regret them. And it's just not worth it in the end. It's just something you do not want to hold on your heart for the rest of your life. It's not worth it, man. Like, seeing your mother cry every time she comes sees you. It's not worth it, and uh, just knowing that um, <clears throat> your parents are doing everything they can and still not have uh, <clears throat> enough money for uh, to buy clothes for the kids and stuff. It's not worth it. You're choosing your friends over your family, and your friends aren't going to send you one dollar bill, not even a penny when you're in here. So it's not worth anything. It's not worth uh, <clears throat> throwing your life or your friends, or I mean your family away, man. It really isn't. You shouldn't be doing this. Get out. <laughs>